I'm David Temple. I'm music director of Hertfordshire Chorus. And today I'm going to be asking some questions to the baritone Ashley Richards. And Ashley is one of the very few singers who's ever emailed me out of the blue and then been invited to come and sing. Uh, we first worked together 10 years ago on Beethoven's Choral Symphony, and he's worked with me regularly ever since. Even though I never heard Ashley sing in an audition, uh, the first time he opened his mouth and sang, Oh, Freunde, I knew I was in the presence of something very special. So, Ashley, welcome. We know you, you as a world-renowned baritone. Did you sing much before your voice broke? Um, I, I, I sang a little bit. I suppose I did. I more did other kinds of other kinds of music. I was a, a really keen uh, uh, pianist and flautist, if you can believe it. I, I did lots of music at, at senior school, and um, because of that, I was forced to join the choir. But it, it wasn't until my voice broke. Uh, that singing started becoming a, a serious thing for me and um, it has gradually taken over my life since then. Do you come from a, a musical family? Um, I do come from quite a musical family, I suppose. Um, my granddad was a, a fantastic jazz trumpeter and he was the bandmaster of the Olympia Ballroom in Scarborough and uh, was a, quite a major musical presence in the town. Um, and then on my, my mum's side, my mum was the village organist and, and, and a really wonderful pianist. Um, and then otherwise, I, I'm told that, that my grandma had an extremely loud voice in her day, so, so maybe that's where the singing comes from. So when your voice did break, how long was it before you realised that you had a very special instrument? Um, I think I realised sort of straight away that it was quite loud, but, but quite unformed. So I guess that was from the age of maybe 15. Um, and then um, through singing lessons with, with a wonderful man called Julian Smith, I discovered lots of German leader, basically. Um, and uh, little by little, my voice got a little bit, uh, a little bit smoother. Um, so I guess I was, I, was, I was singing relatively seriously, I suppose, by the time I was 18, which is when I went uh, to King's Cambridge as a choral scholar. When you were at King's under Stephen Clearbury, what did you learn from the experience in terms of your own musicianship as well as music in general? I would reckon I, I've learnt almost all of my, my musical taste as it is now uh, from, from Stephen Gleibri. It's very difficult to put into words what he gave because in essence it was something incredibly subtle. Stephen had the most fantastic sense of the structure of a piece of music. He felt things very, very intensely and that intensity of emotion tended to come out in the, the subtle gradations of tempo and of dynamic and other sorts of expression. What I learned from Stephen was that music, incredibly dramatic though it is, does not always have to be about large gestures, but subtle changes that really draw a listener to you can be at least as potent. I think you went to the Guildhall, is that right, after that? Yeah, that's right. And then, having done that, you wanted to establish yourself as a, as a soloist. Was that difficult to get, to get on, that, on that road, or, or did it come quite easily? I, I suppose it, it came relatively easily. I was fortunate enough that directly from, from the Guildhall, I, I, I was, was given a place on the Young Artist Programme at the Royal Opera House. Plus, having started to garner solo experience straight away from my time at music college, not, not least with you, David, I guess I was able to build up a bit of a stream of work. And I've, I've always been, been lucky that I've been able to work in opera and in concerts and in song recitals. 
um, and uh, have been doing the three pretty much equally throughout my career. I feel very privileged to conduct half the chorus and whenever you come and sing with us you're, you're always absolutely delightful and and um, what, what is it about about the chorus that, that, that you like to work with them? I suppose it's the seriousness with which everybody approaches the, the, the music. I mean the standard is really extraordinarily high. Actually the, the, the sheer experience of the people in um, Hart's chorus is, is quite staggering. I mean, the diction, which is the bugbear of every choral conductor, is a huge step above most because people know what's required. And that experience just really shines through. It, it's just like walking into a, in, into a professional outfit, but maybe without the jadedness of the, of the professionals, which is absolutely wonderful. Well, that's lovely to hear. Thank you. You mentioned earlier about the three sides of your, your career, opera, concert work and, and leader and recitals. Um, do you have a particular favourite or do you just enjoy mixing and matching? I do enjoy mixing and matching. I mean, I think that they each present different, you know, joys and challenges. The kind of intimacy and intensity of the recital setting is absolutely fantastic. But then again, it is in many ways the most difficult and exposing form performing long things, you know, if you're doing Winterreiser or something, which is about an hour and a quarter without the music, and clearly it's all in German. You have to try and entertain people for a long period of time, you know, with, with only yourself and your voice. You know, that's, that's, a, that's a real challenge. And then the concert repertoire is, is what I grew up with at King's and at school, you know. Whenever I, I do that, that kind of repertoire, it's um, like a, a wonderful homecoming, you know. It's it, music which I feel is absolutely in my blood. And then um, opera presents, of, of course, a whole um, different set of challenges and opportunities. You have to give a dramatic performance as well as a vocal one. I suppose it's just a wonderful thing that, that, that singing as a career offers this enormous scale of different ways to, to perform and to communicate. Babylon was a great city. Her merchandise was of gold and silver, of precious stones, of pearls, of fine linen, of purple silk and scarlet. How do you actually learn new material, especially new material where you have to sing it from memory? You can learn quite intellectually. You might do it with, you know, mental pictures or the, the meanings of specific words. But the best way to try to recreate the sensation of spontaneity is, ironically enough, by going over something hundreds and hundreds of times such that it, it basically becomes lodged somewhere in your, I don't know, somewhere in your subconscious. And it, it is as if the, the words then come to you unbidden. And the souls of men. What do you most like about your musical life and what do you least like about it? The variety of it is, is, is just wonderful and the, the, the flexibility and the freedom of it. The idea that you can be, you know, performing bark passions and you know with you one week and then be doing an opera in Paris the next week and then a month later be in the States or whatever you know and all with with different and fantastic and interesting people I mean you know the the, the variety of it is just extraordinary and then also the fact that you get paid to do what is essentially a hobby I mean and then what I least like well I mean also I suppose it's the same thing isn't it the traveling is also hard my wife and I have a baby daughter and being away from her is, is hard, you know, as, as anybody who, who travels for work will know. I mean, you know, I miss them both enormously. Are there any major choral works on your wish list which you've never, never done before? Um, I'm sure that the answer must be yes. I'm really interested to do Tippet, Midsummer Marriage, which I've got coming up in about... 18 months 
um, I think that'll be that'll be wonderful. Um, but I I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I've 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 had a reasonable um, reasonable run of uh, of the big choral pieces, and actually I I'm looking forward to to, to coming back to things and 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 you know finding more in and do it differently and do it better. So this is not quite like Desert Iron Discs, but can you think of what is the most magical moment in your entire musical life? Is there any one thing that sticks out above everything else? Oh, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I guess that sort of thing is all about uh, first times, I suppose. You know, first time in Carnegie Hall, or first time with Berlin and Phil, or, you know, first time, in, first time at Covent Garden. Um, and then I suppose some, you know, first times with pieces. I mean, I remember the first time that, that we did Gerontius, for instance, was the first time that I'd done Gerontius. And that was an absolutely extraordinary experience. Well, I, I think it's wonderful that uh, that we started this conversation with Hartford's Chorus and we ended up with Hartford's Chorus as well. Well, absolutely. Ashley, thank you so much for your time. Great, I, great I wish pleasure. You well with your career and thank you for for speaking with us. Very, very lovely to talk to you and, and hopefully uh, be back in, in person soon and, and back on the concert platform.